So today we're doing 5.5 standard form. The equation is AX plus BY equals C, where A, B, and C are real numbers. That might beg the question, what the heck's a real number? A real number is every single kind of number, fraction, decimal, except for numbers that are irrational, like pi square root of two is also irrational. If you plug square root of two into your calculator, you'll see that it's a, a decimal that goes on forever. It's kind of screwed up. So A, B, C are real numbers, okay? And both A and B can't be zero. They're not both zero. One of them could be zero, but they both can't be zero. Otherwise you have no line, that's why. Okay, so we're gonna find X and Y intercepts. You guys have, you know what intercepts are because we've talked about the Y intercept of Y equals MX plus B. So you know what those are. We're gonna write this equation twice, 3X plus 4Y equals 24. 3x plus 4y equals 24. And we're going to use this method called the cover-up method. I'd write that down and highlight it because it's really easy to do once you get the cover-up method. And it's kind of messed up now. Normally, I just cover it up like this. I'd walk around in the classroom, like grab your finger and cover up like that. Um, but in this case, we just kind of scribble to cover up, okay? So I'm scribbling out the X term on the first equation and the Y term on the second equation. First equation will solve for Y. Second equation will solve for X. And that gives us the two places where the line crosses both the X and the Y axis. So on this side, I would divide both sides by four y equals 6. So this equation, 3x plus 4y equals 24, crosses the y-axis at positive 6. This equation over here crosses the x-axis at 8. So all they asked us in this problem are what are the x and y-intercepts? y-intercept is 6, x-intercept is 8. It's a good idea to get in the habit of writing these as an ordered pair because I'm going to make a graph. I'm starting with the next example. So this ordered pair would be 0, 6. This ordered pair would be 8, 0. So remember, always your ordered pairs go in x, y order, right, because then it helps you to know where you put the number. So I'm going to graph 0, 6, and 8, 0 on a graph page here. Or no, I'm, we're going to do that on the next problem. Okay, so this one, we have x minus 2y equals negative 2, and x minus 2y equals negative 2 again. And we're just going to cover up. So I cover up the x on this one, the y on this one. Jackson, what do I divide by on this one? Jackson Zang. Almost. There you go. Right, so the reason I corrected Jackson right there is we don't want to get rid of the y as well. Just leave the y by itself on that side. Negative divided by negative is positive, just like negative times a negative. As I've told you many times this year, the rules for division and multiplication are the same as far as how the negatives work. So negative divided by negative positive, so that's positive 1. This one is already done. X equals negative 2. So it's kind of nice when you just have an X there because you don't really need to do a heck of a lot. So Y equals 1, X equals negative 2. And now we're going to go to a graph page and graph that. Does anyone need more time on that? Okay. Okay. 
So y equals one, x equals negative two. So you can remember y to the sky so you know which axis is which because sometimes students will mix those up. So x is a horizontal one, y to the sky. So y equals one, all you gotta do is just make a dot where y equals one, x equals negative two. Make a dot where x equals negative two. And connects the dots and you're done. Okay, simple, simple, simple. Okay, we good on that? Nod your head, yes, if we're good on that, good job. All right, thank you. All right, we're gonna do one more of this kind, graphing. So we get two X plus five Y equals 20. Write the same one again. Easiest way to do it. Now we could do this differently. Cover up methods for sure, for sure, the easiest way. We could solve this for y and put it into slope intercept form and then graph it just like it. That would be fine. Just seeing if there's something in the chat. Come on. Yeah, no problem, Dominic. All good. All right. So just cover up the X first, cover up the Y in the second one. You could do it in opposite order. It doesn't matter. What I recommend is you do it the same way each time so it doesn't get messed up. So here we divide by five and get Y equals four. Over here, divide by two, we get X equals 10. So kind of crazy, you guys could maybe possibly be back in person one day a week starting two weeks from today. So just mull that over a little bit, right? I can show you, have I showed you guys the classroom yet? So during homework time, I'll flip the camera around and show you kind of what the classroom looks like just so you can see it because you might be back here in two weeks. It's exciting, but... You know, it depends how the numbers are. If the numbers spike up like crazy, then you guys won't be. But I think we'll probably be back in person, but we'll see. All right, so y equals 4, x equals 10. Um, and then just graph that. Y equals four, X equals 10. Boom. And there's your graph. Okay, any questions on those? I hope that it seems really easy for you because it should. If it doesn't, come to access time and I will help you out. Okay, so we got x equals 3, y equals 3. They're already solved for x and y. We need to graph these. Okay, so write x equals 3 and y equals 3. And we'll just graph them um, right here like you would on your paper. So x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, dot. Now here's the question. Well, let's do this. y equals 3. So up 1, 2, 3. Where do you think this line goes, horizontal or vertical? Show me with your arm. Horizontal, vertical. 
All right, so I'm looking around and all of you guys look at all the little faces on here as well, I realize. So this one goes vertical because this order pair would be three comma zero. Again, remember it's X, Y alphabetical order. So three comma zero, if I pick another point up here, that would be like three comma four. If I pick a point down here, that would be three comma six. So why the heck would I put these three order pairs? The reason I would do that is because X always equals three everywhere along this, right? So that forces it to be vertical. So that's one way to kind of solidify it in your brain. The other way I think about, I look at X equals three and think to myself, which axis does it cross? Well, it's got to cross the X axis, cross as in go up and down the X axis, right? And here's the proof why it works. Okay, so this one, horizontal or vertical, show me with your arm. Yeah, right, because if this one's vertical, then duh, that one's gotta be horizontal. So draw your line and just to emphasize that same point, I pick that order pair, that would be, right, I know it's gonna be three for the Y, and then what is it for the X? My spacing couldn't be more awkward here, but whatever, one, two, three, four, five. So five comma three up there. This one right here would be zero comma three. And if I pick a point like right here, then that order pair would be negative two comma three. So does Y always equal three? Yup, 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 right? So that's why that makes sense that it would be a horizontal line, Y equals. But again, what I think about is which axis does it cross? Y. Which axis does it cross? X. And it makes it easy. Anyone need more time on that? Freak out and wave your hands like a crazy person if you need more time. Nobody needs more time. Okay. Write this one down. So the next two examples I think are the harder of the two examples we'll do today. And we only have two examples left. So, you know, that's not true. We have three examples left. So we have Y equals negative seven thirds, three sevenths X is what I meant to say, plus five. <clears throat> we want to make this thing into standard form. What I like to do is write standard form always. Whenever the problems tell me to put it in one form or the other, um, I was like writing it down because then it's like a skeleton and you know where to place your numbers. So how do I get rid of divide by seven? Somebody tell me. Unmute your mic, tell me. Multiply, multiply right? We're gonna multiply. So when I multiply by seven, many of you guys will do this and put the whole thing in parentheses with a seven outside. And I've taught algebra one for the last 19 years and people screw it up when you do it like that. So don't do it like that, do it like this. So I'm showing every single part that I'm multiplying by seven because then I'm less likely to forget about one of those parts. So we get seven Y in this middle term here, these sevens cancel, right? If you don't get that, you can always multiply straight across. You'd have negative 21 in the top divided by seven, which is still negative three. So if that helps you to understand it better, do it that way, it's fine. Then I look over here, so I've got, now it's starting to look a lot like this formula. The issue is that X and Y are on the left side over here, and we got the X on the wrong side. So to move this negative three X over to the other side, all I have to do is add three X. So we're just gonna add three X to both sides. So we get three X plus seven Y, 
equals 35. So clear the fraction. What form is this in? Somebody unmute and tell me. You all know this because you've been working, this is a fourth year you've been working with these kind of problems. Fourth year. What form is this in? Y equals what? MX plus B. MX plus B. Thank you, Clevis. This is in Y equals MX plus B form. So we're going from slope intercept to standard form. Next example we're going to do is from point slope to standard form. So that happens all the time in math. You'll rearrange an equation because one way is easier to solve than the other way. So we've got this equation here, y minus 2 equals negative 1 third times the quantity x plus 6. So again, I could clear the fraction. Um, I could multiply this part. So I would only multiply this by 3 and multiply the y and the negative 2 by 3. I think that is not the easiest way to do this problem. So what I'm going to do instead is to distribute. But I just want you to know that the two easiest ways to solve it, and it just depends on the problem. So if I look at, is one-third of six a whole number? Nod your head, yes or no. Is one-third of six a whole number, as in not a decimal, but like two, three, four, five, whatever? Yes, it is a whole number. So because I don't get a decimal here or an improper fraction or something weird, then I'm going to distribute. So I get y minus 2 equals negative 1 third x. Show me with your fingers what 1 third of 2 is. Oh, 1 third of 2 is 2, right? You break 6. I said that wrong. 1 third of 6, I'm sorry. 1 third of 6 is 2. You break 6 into 3 equal parts, you're going to have 2. So negative 1 third times 6 is negative 2. So again, are we getting closer to AX plus BY equals C? Yeah, we're getting closer. Not quite there yet. X is on the wrong side. we got two numbers instead of one. Right? C is just a number. It's called the constant. So that just means a number. Okay? So we are just going to add 2 to both sides. So we get y equals negative 1 third x, because those cancel. Those cancel. So the 2s are just gone. Then all I got to do to make it look like ax plus by equals c is just add this 1 third x over to the other side. What's left over here? Yeah, good, Austin. One, negative one-third x plus one-third x, zero. The reason I say that is because you got to write this zero over here, right? In standard form, um, a, b, and c have to be integers. Ari, question? Yeah, um, how can we still um, add x? Because y equals one third x. There's not. I don't get why you keep solving. Because we wanted to have the x and y on the left side for it to be in standard form. Mm -hmm. So right here, at this place, we would have gone from point slope, which was at the beginning here, to slope intercept. But we want to make it into standard form. So that's why X and Y have to be on the left side for standard form. The other thing too, you cannot have fractions in standard form, okay? So that's a good thing for you guys to write down. No fractions allowed. Or decimals, right? No fractions, decimals. They gotta be complete numbers. They could be negative, they could be positive but just no fractions. 
So what I'm going to do is multiply by what? Oh, Eddie Van Halen just died. Really? Um, also, so I think I have computers at like 4%. My charger is at my mom's house. Oh, that sucks. All right, well, I'll have, uh, you could look, listen on your phone or just watch a video later because I'm recording. All right. Okay. All right. So I'm going to multiply all these parts by three. I know three times zero is zero. I'm just going to show it. The threes cancel here, right? I just have one X left. Three times Y is three Y. So we're done right there. Can you scroll up? Yep. Is that enough or higher? A little bit higher. I couldn't connect. Ah, so you need the beginning problem? Thank you. No problem. Mr. Evans? Yeah. I have a question. Fire away. Because no fractions allowed. Oh, okay, yeah. That's why. Good. Those clarifying questions, I know you asked that question, you're like, of course, I knew that, right? But those are all good to ask because I guarantee somebody else is like, why the hell do you multiply by three? Because no fractions allowed. Okay? All right. We have one more example, your favorite. Word problem. Woohoo! Write the AX plus BY equals C because we want this thing to look like this form. We're writing it in standard form as it says here. So you can just jot down the little stuff that I talk about here. Um, let me read it first. Somebody have a question? Volpe, unmute your mic or mute your mic. I mean, there you go. Okay. A media download store sells songs for a dollar each and movies for $12 each. You have $60 to spend. Write and graph an equation that describes the items you can purchase. And then we want three combinations of movies and songs that you could buy. Okay, so that's all the stuff we're going to figure out. So a lot of you guys are like, how do I know which one's X, songs or movies? Um, you know that the first thing, so there's no rhyme or reason to this. The book just always does it the same way. And what they say is the first thing they come across is X. Second thing we come across is Y. So songs is X, movies is Y. So X equals songs, Y equals movies. So we're going to set it up with X and Y on the left and whatever the other number is on the right side. Does anyone want to take a stab at the equation? Because I have got somebody in mind I'm going to call on. Although I've already called on that person a few times. So now you're all scared about if I'm going to call on you or not. Ooh, I know who I'm going to call on. If I can find my mouse. There we go. Parker. See what Parker's got in his picture there? That's called the big green egg. It's a really good uh, barbecue thing. Parker, take a stab at the equation. What? Take a stab at the equation. Movies cost one I or... I just came back in the bathroom. Yeah, okay. Awkward. It's all good, man. Um, Maddie Bratz, what you got? She's like, oh, God, he called on me. Saw that look. Oh, great. You just I, happen to be I, right I, above him on my screen. That's why I called on you. How much is the song? Um, okay, so it's 12X. How much is the song? Oh, one. X plus. One X, 12Y equals 60. See how easy that is? See, you're all freaked out and you totally got it right. Don't be freaked out. You know what's up. 
one x plus 12 y equals 60 good job so they want us to graph this thing now i could change this into slope intercept form and graph it like that you could totally do that what i'm going to do is cover up method because i think it's easier So I covered up the X term first, I covered up the Y term second. And then we're just gonna solve for Y on the left, solve for X on the right. X is already solved on the right, one X equals 60. Over here, I just have to divide both sides by 12. So here I have Y equals five. So y equals 5, x equals 60. Now I'm going to go graph it. Actually, I'm going to write this in a different spot. Because I can't buy negative songs or movies, I'm going to only show the first quadrant or where X and Y are positive. Do you guys know about quadrants, like quadrants one through four? Have you learned that yet? Shake your head if you have learned about quadrants, quadrants one through four. So if I just do, just so you can know it if you don't, quadrant one, X and Y are positive, and two, three, and four, it goes like that. And we use this coordinate plane all the way through Cal like it goes forever. Over here, X is negative, Y is positive. Here, they're both negative. Here, X is positive, Y is negative. So you don't have to know that yet, but I just like bringing stuff like that up. Okay, so we've got X equals 60 and Y equals five. I'm gonna skip every other and write like one, two, three, four, five, like that for the y values, right? y to the sky. x values, I'm gonna go by tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Couldn't be a heck of a lot easier to graph. Now we have it graphed. So when you do this kind of problem on your homework or on a quiz, super helpful to have a graph because when they ask us about the three different combinations of songs and movies that will work for this equation, we already have two of the three right here, right? I just have to write ordered pairs that go with these. So if I have Y is five, that means X is zero, so this order pair is zero, five. This one is 60 comma zero. So it asks us for three different combinations of songs and movies. So I could have bought zero songs and five movies, or I could have bought 60 songs and zero movies. Then for the third point, I can just look along my line here and find a place where it exactly crosses on the grid pick that point, and then I just have to say what X is, in this case, 30. And what's Y over here? Uh-oh, two and a half. I can't buy half a, half a movie, so that order pair does not work. So I'm gonna look for a different one. Right, that kind of stuff can happen. Um, that's probably going to be the only one that's close, of course. We'll just pretend like this one's exactly it. So we've got, I could buy 35 songs. That's fine. I just can't buy half a movie because that'd be kind of stupid. All right. So 35 songs and two movies. Okay. So close enough. You, What I really want you to understand is, you got to pick points along this line, right? 
And then think about it. You're not going to buy half a song. You're not going to buy half a movie, right? Because then you don't know what the ending is. That would kind of suck. All right. Your homework is posted right here. It is page 326, 9 through 35 odd. I'll say that again. Write that on top of your paper. Page 326, 9 through 35 odd. I'm going to plug in my MacBook. It's about to run out of juice. Okay, so page 326, 9 through 35 odd, you've got that, a quiz over this section, and quiz work. Okay, Schoology was all screwed up. I'll make the breakout rooms like I always do. So if you have an individual question about grades or whatever, we can go there to answer those questions. But you got the rest of the time to finish your homework and quiz. Don't leave until both are done, and we're good. I'm going to stop the recording. Maybe.